Happy Devil's Wednesday. This is the State of the Fan Address, episode 258, presented by PucksandPitchforks.com. I'm your host, Sam Wu, here with Pucks and Pitchforks Editor-in-Chief, Nick Volano, streaming live on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, X Live, and Twitch on the Let's Go Devils Network. As the Devils have, uh, I don't know, eliminated themselves out of contention for the playoffs. Although there are some standings that have no E next to it. So I I can't imagine this scenario. Oh, no, they're officially gone. Yeah, so maybe they didn't update the E? I I don't know. I, I guess the scenario is if the Islanders bus goes into... The same purgatory that Wade Boggs fell into on The Simpsons. I think that's, I think that's the only scenario where we're not eliminated. <laughs> yeah, it's like one of those. Uh, it's like, it's like the uh, defensive indifference, or I think that's the terminology in baseball when you steal second base even though you're down five runs. Like, right? What's the point of that? Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've seen crazier comebacks before, but this one is official. Unless the unless Gary Bettman comes out and either adds a playoff team or adds an 83rd game, season's over, baby. Season's it, over. It, it could have it. Is that is that breaking news right now? <laughs> Listen, Gary Bettman's got his hands full in Arizona, so I, I don't <laughs> think that he's going to be changing schedules right now. Yeah, you know what? I think that came after the threat of the Scottsdale mayor saying, look, you know, right. we don't yeah, want a bunch did. of rookies uh, doing a land deal on this primetime real estate here. And uh, those words matter. And, um, you know, the NHL has to, like, yeah. had to say something just, about it. So I covered uh, pretty in-depth the uh, Tampa Bay Rays situation in um, – Tampa and St. Pete and you know it's it was really hard with mayors that wanted to make it work and they wanted to make you know they they tried that split season thing with um, Montreal and Tampa was willing to do it but St. Pete was not um, but Tampa has, you know, these cities have limited land, especially these cities. Like, you know, the, the one thing that we're not talking about is Phoenix is one of the fastest growing cities in the world, in the country because people want to go for the tax breaks. They want to go for the warm weather. They want to go for, you know, to live like you vacation. Same thing with Tampa. That was kind of covering the same thing. Um, and you run out of land because, it, again, another very similarity between Tampa and 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 Phoenix is like once you get out of Tampa, it's swampland. You can't really build on that, right? There's not like the infrastructure doesn't work. You can't just build a stadium on a swamp. You can't just build a stadium on a desert. Uh, and, and the difference between Florida and Arizona that's very distinct is the lack of water. And that was something that I was I was seeing a lot about. Is Scottsdale didn't want to connect to their water because they already it's already scarce. You know they have enough for their citizens and for their businesses, but an arena just demands so much water and they just, they had no interest and, and I get it, you know, like why would you sign up for a headache when you're not getting anything in, in return? And they just didn't think it was going to bring in the, uh, the, um, the tourism that, that, that it was promising. And, you know, I look at Salt Lake city and and I, yes, this is a devil's podcast. Everybody, you know, we'll get to that in a second. But I mean, I look at Salt Lake City, and and I don't. I mean, I, I, the Jazz do all right, right? They do all right, but it's not. It's not like Vegas, where I so 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 back when I had what's called the Sports Envy blog, I uh, I wrote about Vegas and how I was against it, and then when I worked for Rant Sports. I wrote something different about how I was for it, and then it happened while I was writing. For, you know, Vegas came into the into the lexicon when I was writing for Pucks and Pitchforks, and I was curious. I was like, I don't know. This seems they seem pretty adamant that it's going to work, and it's it's been gangbusters. Now, here's the thing about that: is that that arena is like walking distance from the strip, like I had a hotel at one of the MGM. At, uh, 
properties, and you could see they play the game on on the roof of the T-Mobile Center, or I think it's T-Mobile Arena or whatever. Um, so, like, that's an enticing scenario, and a lot of people go to Vegas for three, four, five days. So, you know, there's sometimes two nights games there. I I don't know. You know, people go to Salt Lake City, right? But they they go there to go skiing. So they go like in the mountains near Salt Lake City. They go, they they travel to the lakes around Salt Lake City. They, I don't know, you know. I actually had a. Funnily enough, I have a lot of ties to this. I don't know why, but I, I my first job interview for new, a news station was Salt Lake City. So I was very like in tune with the market. The market's like forty to forty two. You know, these keep changing, and what that means is that it's the fortieth biggest metropolis in the country, which sounds big. But it's really not. Like you think there's thirty, the you know this would be the or this is the thirty second NHL franchise. Seven are in Canada, you know. So you know you're not in one of the top twenty three cities. I know Houston's like hot and heavy trying to get a, a franchise, and Atlanta's hot and heavy trying to get a franchise. Those two are in the top. I can't remember where Atlanta is. I think Atlanta's in the top ten. I know Houston's in the top ten. So like those are two that are trying to like fill with the metropolis. But Salt Lake City just doesn't they don't have the um the 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 population i think the population get behind it similar like seattle but they just don't have that same like seattle's like the i think 13th in 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 metropolis 13th or 14th and Salt Lake City's 40th it's just a huge difference by millions of people and um and beyond that you know, there's, there's apparently major issues with the arena. So I don't know why I just went into a whole big dissertation on this, but I I just don't... Like, this whole situation seems like this either-or situation is just wrong. Like, I don't I don't know. I guess it, it, it probably makes more sense to move them to Quebec, <laughs> right? Like, the, the, at least we know it would work there. But um, I, they just want to make American cities work, and, and here we are. I forgot about Quebec because I remember doing the research on Because the NHL it. wants you to. No, I, I remember doing the research on it and it, it's it look, they'll they'll fill they'll fill the building, but they're financially it's not gonna work. Well if they fill the building, what else do they need? You talking about like getting T V interest in it? No, it's 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 the economics don't the economics don't work. Like, yeah, there's fan interest, but you know, you can fill the building all you want, but it's just not. You know, maybe it's diluting the from the Montreal Canadiens. I I don't know. Maybe the taxes are that high. I I have no idea. But I I forgot yeah. I forgot. But it was a very good reason why they would never do it in in, in Quebec City ever again. I mean, they're listening to it, but, you know, I, they're going to listen to a lot of people. A lot of people who have the money to put, bring it to the table. Uh, but I do want to talk about the Devils. Three games left. You know, it, it's just not a, another really, really, really bad effort in the third period. And that's been the mantra of this Travis Green Devils. And that's something I'll give props to Lindy Ruff. There were some duds under Ruff this year, but it wasn't a collapse. It was just they they just didn't show up for work, right? It was just like they just had an off night and they just got destroyed. The Devils keep, I don't know like if they're taking their foot off the gas or maybe it's just that they're getting lucky. Um, I don't know what the situation is, but it just seems like like that third period was i like never thought they had a chance to score like and maybe i'm like just misremembering something but like it just like they just weren't getting in deep like they were in the first and second period they weren't they weren't really putting it in on wall when they were the desperate team like the, Toronto pretty much has this locked up like i know they're trying to stave off Tampa but you know, Tampa's, what, five points back or something? Four points back? So, the Devils should have been the desperate team there to keep their season alive. 
they just found out Jack Hughes was out. And I'll, I'll kind of get into that. I want to talk about, I just did a big story on the doctor. I don't know if you read that, Sam, but uh, I, I kind of want to talk about that a little bit. But I, I just want to talk about how, and I wrote about this last week, where the, the these third periods are going to cost Travis Green his job. And they, and they ended up doing that, right? He got eliminated because of another third period, just no show. Call it a collapse. Call it whatever you want. Um, and Travis Green is not going to be the coach here the next year. He's going to be looking for another job. I think Travis Green brings something to the table. But he's not the right guy for this team. He needs to go to, like, an Arizona or, like, a or wherever they end up. Like, he needs to go to, like, a San Jose. Like, that's... That's the kind of job he needs because he's in over his head. Maybe that's not the right word. That that might just be disingenuous. I, he just doesn't seem like he's the right man for this job. And, you know, I just did a story about five guys with experience who don't have a job right now who could be the right guy for this job. There's just a lot available, Sam. And, and, the, and the firing situation didn't happen yet. Mike Sullivan might be available. Um uh, I mean, there. I actually, I don't want to go through this because I'm going to write about it soon. Maybe tonight. Um, but there's some interesting names. Sam, you know, the one that it's going to be interesting. I will give you this one because I'm going to write about it. Do you think the Bruins fired Jim Montgomery if he fails in the first round again? There's a good chance. Like, where's that franchise? There's where's that franchise? Chance. There's a good chance. What about Rod Brindamore? Does does Carolina fire Rod Brindamore if they fail in the first round against a hapless Flyers, Islanders, or Capitals team? I think there's more of a chance that Montgomery would be out than Brindamore in right in Carolina. I mean, I don't know. Do you think there's I mean, any surprises? Do you have like any surprises? Like, I mean, Montgomery would be a massive surprise. But like, is there any surprises on your list that you know, keep an eye on this one? Because maybe Tortorella they're, they're just... getting canned. Do you want Tortorella? I didn't say I wanted Tortorella. I'm just saying that's what I mean. Uh, yeah, I'm just. It was just a question. No, it was. A, it was. Yeah, it was just. You know, do I want him? be honest with you at this point yeah at this point you know there's got to be a coach that's gonna just this team is way way i think i think the honeymoon's over with the new jersey devils they need a disciplinarian they need somebody that's gonna tell how it is uh i think lindy may have coddled them too much uh, they seem uh, they play a little bit like they're entitled in some ways, mm-hmm. in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a figuratively speaking, and but the same problem exists. Uh, to answer your question before you, about the third period collapses, you know, with the Travis Green, you know, interim era, again, I think it's a little bit of both. They get lucky with outstanding goaltending from Jake Allen, but that only lasts so long. It's the goaltending, which, you know, I think with Jake Allen, they have a good 1B right now. Um, But it's the defense. It all goes back to the defense because there are a lot of times that Jake Allen just absolutely bailed out the defense. And, okay, he kept you in it, but you know what? By the third period, boom, the teams figured them out. Business as usual, Devils lose again in the third period, and this is now reverting back to the 2021 New Jersey Devils. That's a big regression there because, you know, there were times where that team would get a lead and then they would just blow it in the end. Right. I, my my only thing about Tortorella is if you're gonna hire, if you're even gonna consider hiring Tortorella, just hire Barube because I think Barube is a better coach and has They'll that never same get hired. Discipline. They'll never get hired. Why? All the Devils have to do is do a background check on Barube. They will never let it happen. Okay. I'm assuming you're not gonna tell me more. Well, I mean, it's well documented about the racist thing he said 
years ago. I'm not saying that. that wow, I didn't even realize that. I, I don't think that should be hell. You know, that was a long time ago. You know, I don't want to rehash that. But the Devils have, right. you know, the Devils aren't going to go there. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Like, you you can want Baruby all you want. I think Baruby would be a great coach. But I'm talking about Harris Blister Sports Entertainment the way they think. You know, that's the way they're going to do it. They they want they don't want any controversy. So, you know, they're going to go with a coach that's going to nurture this team, something they can be proud of. Uh, I don't think they can bring Baruby in. Um, that's just my opinion on it all. There's no Yeah, way. I mean, that's a good point. Um, let me ask you something. I'm going to regret asking this, but I'm going to do it because I, I, I don't know. So a friend of the podcast, Cam Jansen, had an interesting guest on his podcast this week. Did you see this? I saw it. I didn't listen to it. I'm actually wanting to listen to that uh, podcast. So, yeah. So we had Joel Quenville on. And Joel Quenville sounded contrite. He sounded uh, like a man who realized he made a mistake. For those who didn't listen to the interview... Quenville claims that he did not. He was called into a meeting in the middle of a state in their what it was a 2010 race to the Stanley Cup. Uh, he just knew there was a situation involving Brad Aldrich, the uh, video coach, and kind of that's it. Didn't know the details. Knew that there was some inappropriate texts. Knew that like there was some showing up at bars where people were, um, but didn't ask further questions. And he, he said, I regret not asking further questions, knowing what I know now. Like, and, and like, obviously, when you're in that situation, you're going to say that. But I was just curious what your thought. I personally, I think if you're not going to hire Baruba, you're definitely not hiring Quenville. I think that's that's where I would be in, in, based on what your assessment. But what was, I'm just curious what your thought is. Well... Again, I was just merely saying that, you know, from a New Jersey Devils standpoint, they're going to take a look at that. Right. Again, I think it's going to be the same exact thing as Quenville. I don't think it's either or, you know. Right. Um, honestly, it, you know, again, I didn't listen to the interview. It's good that he's talking about it instead of just like, uh, I'm in retirement. I'll never see you again. Obviously, right. he probably wants to coach. Again, uh, but that's going to take a lot, and it's going to be under. And Barry, I, I believe Gary Bettman has to sign off on it, too. Um, Is that true? I think the Panthers so. fired him. Or am I thinking somebody else? No, I think I think if he ever wants to coach again, he would have to have a conversation with Gary Bettman. I believe. Or am I thinking of something else? I, I remember this story, but I can't put my finger on who it was about. Yeah. Like maybe it was Babcock, but no. Uh, but I feel Bab- like Babcock, but Babcock was a similar situation. But he got rehired, you know. And then right, he got right. Fired, but I know. think that like that that was the story is that he had to talk to Joseph Lennon says I'm Andrew correct Bird. on that. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah, again, I remember the story. I just couldn't put my finger on who the coach is, so I will trust everybody's judgment there. Um, and again, I think we're, I think, you know, I was just curious of your thoughts because I'm having, I'm going to be honest, Sam, like I'm usually a pretty, pretty straightforward with my ethics and, and, and my thought process. And I usually am pretty straightforward with how I think. And I'm very much a, this is a privilege to have a job in this echelon with this price point. But I also put myself in his shoes to where. If I truly didn't know what was happening, and I'm in that culture, you know, I, I don't know what I would do. But again, I don't know. And he could also just be saying this stuff to try to get a job again. So it's a it's a slippery slope. And I was, I guess, I just want to kind of hear your your well, let's, uh, let's thoughts this because way. you're you're more forgiving than me when it comes to these things. So. I, I'm forgiving, but I'm also not forgetting as well. So these situations are tough because, and again, I'm not making excuses for anybody, 
Um, but again, the way I think we need at that time period, I don't think we were very as a society educated enough how to handle these situations like we do in 2024. Not saying that people don't make mistakes now, but I think that was a different time period and I'm not making excuses for what was done, but I think an example was made out of Joel Quenville as it should. Is he remorseful? Let's give him the benefit of the doubt that he is. You know, again, did he pay enough punishment where he can come back and coach? You know, and sometimes the punishment is too great where it's a lifetime ban. You know, it's it's a, I I that that's a really tough question. I mean, you know, and if he knew and he's just lying here, then he should yeah. be banned for life. Yeah, but you don't deserve to have this job if you helped cover this up. Yeah. Like, like like let's just make that clear. You know. We've but, had a, you know, Sam. I I don't want to bring any more tough co- with the McLeod stuff and how much we had to talk about that. Have it kept happening. Stuff kept happening on the day we had podcasts. So we we it was always the story. Um, I I don't want. I, you know what? Actually, now that I think about, it, there's zero chance after the McLeod thing that they're going to set themselves up for this. So I guess this is kind of a moot point. Well, it you know what? It doesn't matter what happens. I mean. They're, all their careers are done. I mean, it's it's no. Right. I mean, e- even I'll tell you, like even the if you if you go to the Duke Lacrosse case where they were exonerated, those players right. absolutely exonerated, they still have trouble finding jobs later in life just because associate like it. That's the other side that nobody ever talks about. Um, I was sort of close to that situation back in 03. I mean, the prosecutor in that case actually went to jail for that case. Right. So um, that's why, again, if you want to talk about Quenville, Baruby, you know, all we all make mistakes, right? Some of them right. are s- small. Some of them are big. Some of them you don't even realize giving the benefit of the doubt some of you do realize you know you know again it's it all goes back to what's best for the new jersey devils hiring coaches with some baggage is a might bring a lack of focus and that's why you don't touch it it's nothing against that i mean look at columbus they hired babcock yeah and then they had to fire babcock because he's and, and that's a, and great. that's a and that's a lesson learned, right. you know. That's a lesson learned. Now, again, I'm and not saying season. Yeah. probably got Kekalan fired, right? He's yeah. he he got fired. Yeah, he got fired. Like the, you know, it's Fitzgerald's not gonna he's gonna learn from Kekalainen's mistake. Yeah. So so let me let me change the subject, but stay on coach. I'm gonna write about it in three categories. I just wrote about guys who are available right now who's had some time off between their last coaching job, whether it was they were fired in the middle of the season or they were fired last year. And, or maybe, you know, in, in Boudreaux's case, what was that, two years ago? Um, they've had some time between having a job and not. So you can have that bucket, you know, head coaching experience, sometimes championship experience, but haven't had a job for at least a few months. Then there's going to be the bucket of guys who could get fired this year. And then there's the buckets of first-time head coaches. If I gave you these three buckets, without knowing the names that are in the buckets, a head coaching with a lot of experience who hasn't had a job for a few months or a few years, a guy who just got fired, or a guy who has never been a head coach before. Which one would you choose? Uh, how about bucket number four? I coach the team. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding around. Uh, as long as I'm your assistant, we get we get massive salaries. Let's let's go. Let's do that. You know what? I I would go with the coach. It that's tough. 
that's a tough. So you're going to have to look at the team, what they really need. They've already had a veteran coach in, in Lindy Ruff. You know, they already had one, right? Um, and Travis Green, I would consider a veteran coach because he's coached before, right? right. Much younger. What is he like? I think Green's like 47. Yeah. If you're going to so bring in a, a, a young coach that's never coached in the NHL level, they must have some unique talent that no other coach has or a unique perspective to the game that fits the devil's mold. Their roster. Who's that guy? I don't know. Um, if you go with experience... Experience also means experience in losing, too. You know, a lot of coaches right. get fired over the year because if, if you don't lose and you keep on winning, you're, you're never going to get fired unless there's a financial right. issue. So – and then what was the middle one? It's like guys who, like, have jobs at this second but won't in a month or two. Well, that's what makes Sullivan attractive, but something tells me if the Pittsburgh Penguins make the playoffs and they go far, he's not going anywhere. Yeah, of course. If they make the playoffs, he's not going anywhere. Yeah. Like, straight up, if they make the playoffs. Yeah. But I don't think they're going to. But uh, but let's just, you know, again, I'm trying not to connect the names to it. I just kind of want to connect situations. Yeah. You know what I mean? But at the same t- time, like, when you want a coach long term, because usually those coaches are in the middle they're in between jobs. They have a shelf life of like four to five years. I want a coach that's going to be here for a while. So, I want. I want. I want to because yeah. we talked about. But dynasties. you want a Boudreau. Yeah, well, Boudreau, but that's with Scott Stevens. That that's okay. a unique situation because I want Scott Stevens somehow connected to the organization because. Since the Harris Blitzer Sports Entertainment, when they kicked out Lou, they kicked out Scott Stevens, you know, that whole thing, John Hines is in, you know. You know, when they hired Ray Shiro, things changed with right. Scott Stevens. Uh, he had one good year with the Wild, with the Bruce Boudreaux, and then Scott Stevens just went off to the sunset, you know, did some NHL Network stuff, which I'm surprised about because – He's not exactly, you know, uh, he's a knowledge of hockey, but not exactly uh, Mr. Public Speaker, you know, in in that sense. Uh, He was a quiet leader, um, led by example. But when he spoke. I think the network loves their devils, though. Like, there's always a devil on there. Brian Boyle, Corey Schneider, Mike Rupp, Ken Danico, Bryce Salvador, Erica Wachter. They just love their devils there. Is this oh, yeah. like, is, do they still, are they in Secaucus? Yeah. So, I think there's a tie there. But Tom Fitzgerald, you know, look, they gave they gave, they gave an extension. <laughs> this is how he repays ownership back, right? So now they're stuck with him unless they want to cut their losses now, which I don't think it would be a good idea. I think I think Fitzy deserves a mulligan here. But, right. but he's going to be on a very short leash. You know. Well, can I ask you something? What? Since you just brought this up, do you think Fitzgerald will be the GM in two months? Oof. I don't know what his contract's like. I don't think anybody does. Only if. Uh, Wow, that's that's a that's a big question because I think a lot of it is the Devils or Harris Blitzer Sports Entertainment was banking on the Devils making the playoffs. They needed they needed their cash cow to produce so they could pay. I was off. gonna say literally banking, like yeah. they they needed the money. Yeah, they needed not money. needed, but they 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 put it in the budget is what I was told. Yeah, and the playoff revenue was in their budget. Yeah, and when you don't have that and you're in the red and you've got a big mortgage payment with a lot of partners on that commander's deal, 
You know, I mean, Nick, the numbers don't lie here. They they literally, on a bad season, eight to twelve percent increase on season ticket holder prices at Prudential Center. The yeah. Rangers, the, believe it or not, I think the Rangers didn't get an increase. I forgot which team didn't get an increase. So it's like, you know, you know it's. I don't know. I I just if if they let's put it this way, it could be it's going to be a tough pill to swallow. But could they do something unimaginable and start cutting costs again? And we're we're back to like a semi rebuild. No, uh, I, I I don't think they're going to. Because it's, they get, so it's maybe it's because they got a taste of what winning feels like in your bank account, right? Maybe. They had two series, like that's tens of millions of dollars with with the whole kit and caboodle, right? Between tickets and merchandise and season ticket renewals and uh, concessions and you know every parking everything like all in probably what what, is, what was it? It was four games, including a game seven, and then it was what two games in in against Carolina. Yeah. Okay, so six games. I'd say the tickets for those six games alone is probably over two or three million dollars, and then food probably another two or three million dollars, and then alcohol probably another two or three million dollars, and then you just have to make up for the other million with the. Uh, Merchandise, which I'm sure they did because people were excited and probably bought new jerseys and bought new hats and new sweaters. And I mean, I bought my kid a, a onesie and he wasn't even born yet. Finally fit in it. It's almost it's over a year later. You know, so. I. Think that they're going to miss that in the budget. I think where you're going to Sam, I think we're going to see cuts is arena experience. Unfortunately, maybe people who work for the team. Um, if they think they need to make cuts at all, because the because they're going to get a bigger payment from the league of revenue share. So, you know, it, it'll even itself out. But or... but I made this point, Sam, and I've, I've re- I wrote about this a couple months ago. This is the most expensive season the Devils will have in a long time. Because it's it's one of the more expensive Jack Hughes years. It's the most expensive Timo Meyer year. It's one of the more expensive Dougie Hamilton years. They their budget before the Jake Allen trade and and the and the Capo Kakinen trade and and holding on to money for Tyler Toffoli was ninety six million dollars just for the salaries. And I'm floored that nobody was talking about it. That's why I wrote about it. I was like, somebody just had to have talked about this. Like we have to talk about the economics here. That this that that Tom Fitzgerald went all in on this year, where he way overpaid on the roster to give himself leeway on the salary cap. But since he did that this year, the next four years for a lot of these contracts, and like it'll even out with some other contracts, but the next four years for a lot of these contracts aren't going to hurt as bad. Actual dollars and, and cents. It, we may exactly. need to ex- we may need to explain that to the listeners that the AAV is not like oh you get paid eight point one million. No, sometimes in the contract, right. the the checks or direct deposits are actually front loaded or it could be back loaded. But in this case, from what Nick's saying, that it's more to our belief, it's all front loaded, like Timo Meyer. And um, right. you know Jack Hughes. I think Team Meyer made like eleven million dollars this year, or something crazy. Yeah. Um. You know. So. Yeah. So. So. Just for an example, like, like, let me just pull it up real quick, just so I could could, could use a real world, world example. Um. The, so the AAV on on Timo Meyer's contract is what it's like eight point eight, right? Something like that. It's in the eight somewhere. Okay, so he's eight point eight. Um, 
his actual contract this year is twelve million dollars. He got a six million dollar salary signing bonus and a six million dollar salary. And his cap hit is eight point eight million dollars because in excuse me, I'm gonna cough. <clears throat> because in the last five years of his deal, he makes under eight million dollars. Seven point seven five in twenty twenty six, twenty seven, down to seven point two million for the last four years of his deal. So he elected to get upfront money. And a lot of people do this. Um but that is what they actually have to pay him, right? So that comes out of the devil's um, uh, budget, I guess. You know, their, their their sheet. You know, their budget sheet. You know, when when they have to pay salaries and and put concessions against it and put season ticket prices against it and all these other things, like it comes out of Josh Harris and David Blitzer's pockets. Um, so it, it's just something that has to be considered. And it's it, I Sam. I also think it's a reason why they still made the move for Jake Allen because as much as Tom Fitzgerald wanted to get assets for Tyler Toffoli, he didn't like. I don't think that the ownership group was cool with just selling or tanking. They wanted to make as much money as possible because they didn't want to go in the red. I don't think they're going to go in the red. I think the the, the revenue share is going to make up for that, but you know, like that playoff money would have put them well in the green. So I, I definitely think it's something that, that has to be considered when having these conversations, but you know, it it's, um, in, and 1 million drops off of Timo Myers deal next year. Um, where's, where's Jack Hughes's deal? Jack Hughes is making he's, – he's going to make the same. He's making 8.5 this year and next year. But maybe it's Nico's deal that's less. There's a deal here. Let's see. This. Brat just signed, and his deal – so Brat loses a million dollars next year. He's making $10 million this year. He'll make nine next year, and then his drops precipitately as it goes along. Again, you see what I'm talking about. Like, they're – Timo Meyer. Jesper Brad, these guys who just signed contracts are getting the big cut now, and it goes down as the contracts. So the last two years, um, Brad's making the last year of the deal. Brad's making six million dollars, but counts seven point eight seven five against the cap. That also makes it easier to trade to teams like you know Salt Lake City or Seattle if they're not in it. Um, and then I thought there was one that was like really weird this year. Maybe it was Hamilton. Let me look at that one real quick. But yeah, my my point is is that the um Okay. So ha- yeah, so here's Yeah, Hamilton is making twelve point six million dollars this year after making six point three million dollars last year. So he had a massive jump in salary, but you know, his goes down a, a lot later in his in his contract too, down to eight point four in the in the second of last year and down to five point two in that final year of his deal. So the the money out for the for the Harris Blitzer team does impact how they do business. And not enough people talked about that. Like I was very surprised. I talked about it though. It was on pucksandpitchforks.com. Great website. I'm not by trying the way. to like. Listen, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I do try to be different than the reporters that cover the team every day. I do try to tell stories that I am knowledgeable about. I do try to tell creative stories that people that interest me. Does that you know? I think that's interesting that the Devils decide. Like, I don't know if they. They could they, it, it, they couldn't have just forgot right be like oh did we they had to have been thoughtful about putting all these contracts on at once and then hoping that you profit later when the, when the team's going on the Stanley Cup runs right like or maybe they thought that this year would be a, a nice run and they just make up for it you know something one of those things had to have been true 
or maybe their other side business uh, that they have uh, needed um, needed some tax benefits. <laughs> maybe, and that's that's a big part of it, right? Is that you know you got to cut the losses on because is he is he still doing the 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 stock trading? I know there's some bad words for it, but is he still is that still his main? Who's he? Breadwinner, Josh Harris. Josh Harris. I'm not going to get into like the the dirty business of hedge funds, but right. Josh Harris left uh, Apollo Global because there was a disagreement. Uh, okay. Who was going to head it? So he had a hissy fit and left to say, you know, focus on his teams. But really, I think he also now has started his uh, own hedge fund right now. Um, and uh, concurrently, I mean, he's a focus. What's that? I think he has attention deficit disorder because my man cannot focus on one thing at once. Yeah, but you know what? At the end of the day, uh, his day job funded everything. His for, toys. Yeah, yeah. yeah his his uh, collection of uh, uh, sports franchises that he decided to buy. You know, so. Um, but he I doesn't think have it, a baseball team yet. That's like the one thing he doesn't oh. have yet. Oh my goodness! I, you know, again, I say this over and over again. Thank goodness he didn't buy the Mets. Oh, that's right. He did try to buy the Mets. Steve Cohen was never gonna let that happen. Oh yeah. I mean, honestly, things haven't really worked out at times with Steve Cohen. But there's one thing I love about Steve Cohen. He actually genuinely loves the Mets. Right. You, you can't deny that. Him and his wife, uh, Alex, absolutely love the Mets. And to me, he can have as many mulligans. As he want, because he's putting his best foot forward. Um, you may not agree yeah. with his strategies, but the guy actually cares. So, um, and he wants to win. He wants to do something special. I think all along, Joshua Harris wanted an NFL team, but he thought his path there was was by the best. No, like what, getting what, the papers. Okay. No, first buying the Sixers. Then buying the Devils, then you know buying other sports interests all over the world. That's how you know that was his prerequisite to becoming an NFL owner. That's the ultimate goal in professional sports right. is to be an NFL owner. That is a cash cow. You know, look well, at he the, he owns like a, a for a hot minute he owned a small percentage of the Steelers. Yeah, but that's more of a, you know. That's like a paid internship, right? Right, right. You know what I mean? That's 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 a rich meeting, but nobody. That's a rich rich guy's way of you know trying to you know get into the country club, the good old boys club of the NFL owners, Um, and you know, got to give him credit. He Joshua Harris is very competitive when it only benefits Joshua Harris, but when it comes to the New Jersey Devils fans. Uh, honestly, you know, I was hoping that we could ride his coattails to a Stanley Cup winning team, but I just don't think the guy knows how to win with 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 these professional sports franchises. None of them have won championships. With the amount of money he has, there, none of them has come close to a championship. And don't forget all the controversies with the 76ers. I mean, I you know, the, you know, you know when uh, Harden left, uh, the burner accounts, uh, the the tanking, uh, the Colangelo's <laughs> taking over the team because they forced the NBA forced the Sixers to learn how to to, to, to run a franchise from a player uh, from a right. play, uh, not players uh, from a basketball operations standpoint. You know, I mean, they've had their fair shares of failures, and they're still here. I give them credit for. But they're not my type of owner that I feel warm and fuzzy about. Jeff Vanderbeek right. I feel warm and fuzzy about. You know? Yeah, but he's so terrible with money that, like, you you always, like, oh, Jeff no. Vanderbeek. No, no, no. Jeff Vanderbeek got unlucky here. He totally got uh, okay, unlucky. Okay, that's here. also fair. And he was in over but- his head. But he was in over his head. He tried to do the right thing. He really did. 
but there was circum- he, he wasn't as powerful as Joshua Harris because, look, he could have easily got – I mean, Lehman Brothers failed in 08. You know, they didn't get bailed out. He, yeah. he could if they, if Lehman Brothers got bailed out, maybe Jeff Vanderbeek might be still the owner. Do you think they would allow that though? What's that? For him to keep his sports franchise, I guess they don't really like impact those. I don't know. Well, you know what happened, right? Do you know the economics behind it? I know the economics behind it. It's pretty simple. Well, I I want to get to because I teased the Jack Hughes part, so oh, I do okay. want to get to that. So, oh. so we could talk next week about Jeff Vanderbeek because we're gonna have nothing to talk about because season's gonna be over. Oh, I guess we can I, do like a we. I want Jeff Park. Vanderbeek on this program. That's like my mission from. Like I day asked one. him. What's that? I asked him. I asked him to come on. And what did he say? He didn't answer. He liked it, <laughs> but never answered. Yeah, he he follows me on LinkedIn. Or friends or buddies? I figured, like, um, his non-disclosure agreement must have run out by now. Is it a I, lifetime I mean, gag uh, order? <laughs> and even if there is, like, he could talk. Like, they, it exists. Right? Like, talk. I just want to talk to him about being an owner and what it was like to It may to be too painful. It may be too painful. I mean, it would be painful for me if that happened to me. I you know maybe maybe we just have to convince him it's not like a that we we enjoyed him as an owner you know what I mean it's not like a what's what's the word I'm looking for it's not like a trap I'm not yeah. setting a trap for him to gotcha or well, a gotcha journalism moment like I'm not trying to do that I, I this um, is what I heard this is what I heard I don't, I don't know how true this is so when he sold the team to Joshua Harris and and you know it was a bad time for Jeff Vanderbeek mm-hmm. and. He offered, I, I don't know, I think he offered, you know, you know, to be a consultant or something like that for a few years or something like that. And basically they said, no, we don't need your help and paid him off to, to go away. You know, so. I feel like a lot of millionaires and billionaires act like that, though. They all think that they have the, the you know, anyway. So let's talk about Jack Hughes. Yep. Because this is very important. So I just wrote about the the story is called "Meet the Man Who, Who's Doing Surgery on Jack Hughes," and uh, Doctor Millet, uh, Millet, I guess it's I don't I don't know I truly I, I I guess I just never looked at how to pronounce it, but it's M I L L E T T. Doctor Millet in Vail, Colorado, um, works for. Uh, like a conglomerate, but he kind of leads it. He's like the lead guy. Um, he's quickly become the premier shoulder surgeon in the National Hockey League. Like, premier. He's done Vladimir Tarasenko. He's done Josh Anderson. He's done, uh, I want to say Josh Norris. He's the, He just did Kent Johnson. But here's the part that's interesting. So he just did Cole Caulfield's shoulder surgery. And I think you can really look at Cole Caulfield's recovery and equate it to Jack Hughes. They're they're different players, right? Cole Caulfield is like a pure goal scorer. Jack Hughes is is an overall superstar. But Cole Caulfield's like finally looking like the guy he was. And the Devils really again, they went out of the way to get the best guy. A lot of the teams are doing it. Like it's this isn't special for the Devils, but this is the this is the Doctor James Andrews of our time when it comes to shoulder surgeries. Jack Hughes has had. I have to predict on two because they they were listed as upper body, but I I think it's pretty clear that the one from this year was a shoulder injury, right? That's he's getting shoulder surgery now. Mm-hmm. Like that's pretty clear that yeah, that's yeah. what that was. We saw him fall. It's pretty clear it was a shoulder. Um, so that makes four confirmed shoulder injuries and a fifth that I think is a shoulder injury. They just called it upper body. He came back. Yada, yada, you know, nobody really talked about it. This man is, I don't think he's ever, did he, did he ever get surgery? I couldn't f- remember and I couldn't find it through my research. Um, 
But this is his first think, surgery it, on this. I think it all started with that Seattle cheap hit. From a can? It, 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 a was, can. it, it was it was a you know, it was kind of a freak injury. Um this is like maybe second game. So it started season. before that. Twenty twenty was the first time he, he got injured with his shoulder. In the NHL. During the COVID stoppage? It was before that. Really? It was like early, or maybe it was maybe it was the next season. No, no, because they didn't come back until 2021. So it was it was before the stoppage he got injured. Um, are you sure about that? Yeah, I mean, that's what that's what I, I looked at Fox Sports. They listed all his injuries. They said shoulder in 2020. Um, talk for a second. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll look it up. I just want to. I'll be. I want to be 100 percent sure. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it first started the the signi- first significant injury he had was against Seattle Kraken, um, where he landed wrong. I think near the boards, maybe. And then I remember there was a big What's fuss. What's that? Around. But I didn't think. I thought. Um, I think he was injured in his rookie season. But I think that was due to something else, though. Okay, so the first, so this is one of the ones that I couldn't confirm. But he had an upper body injury on January second, twenty twenty. Okay, it was his first upper body injury, and then he confirmed injured the shoulder on in October twenty one. I think that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. And then he had another upper body injury last February, which we all kind of think is the shoulder. And then he had a confirmed shoulder injury in October of this season. And then now, you know, they're listening. They listed it as an upper body injury when he fell un, un, you know, assisted. He just fell, landed on his shoulder. Um, so that would make five. But which shoulder? So, so it's left or right? That's the part we don't know. I mean, it does make a difference. Right. Right. So here, here's what. Here's where I'm – there's two sides to this argument. Not, it's not even an argument. There's two sides to this conversation. There's this side, which is he keeps injuring his shoulder and missing time, and it's impacting his season. He didn't look right since he came back. He still looked fine, but not Jack Hughes. And we we kept – like, he he chose first of it. Like, he had that one three-point game. You're like, okay, this is it. And I wrote about it. I was like, all right, the league better watch out. Superstar Jack Hughes is back. Wasn't back. Just here and there, he'd have these great shots. He would, he, his skating was still there, but he was tentative in his decision making. He tried to skate around people instead of just going directly to the net. Didn't want to get deep. Uh, wasn't taking faceoffs, obviously. So something was clearly wrong. Um, so if he gets it fixed finally, let's just, just get it fixed. Then. He comes back next season with a different perspective, and maybe the injuries stop. Maybe that's it, right? You know, Tarasenko hasn't had a ton of shoulder injuries, I don't think, since he had the surgery in 2021. Um, you know, and, and, and Josh Anderson hasn't been the same, but he hasn't, you know. I, I guess I don't know enough about Josh Anderson, but we saw Cole Caulfield. The other side of it is the Cole Caulfield situation. That you had a guy that was a rock solid slam dunk thirty goal scorers twenty four goals this year, and you know a lot of people thought he was going to hit forty, like he was that type of guy, and he's not even close. And there was times in the season where he would disappear, and the consistency wasn't there. He was all chock full of adrenaline in the first couple of games of the season. I think he had four goals in the first six games of the season, then fell off for like two months. But he's he's finally turning it on now. The Devils can't afford that. They can't afford Jack Hughes to disappear next season for two months to, to kind of ramp up. But I don't think they have a choice. So what I think they're going to have to do is kind of like change the way he – like turn him into that superstar facilitator that, that we thought he was going to be in the first place. Maybe lean against the shot, especially on the power play. Like they – the Devils power play looked look better last night against the Maple Leafs. Mm-hmm. So I think they just needed a change of philosophy. I think they just rely too much on Jack Hughes and – 
Jack Hughes is great, but make him a weapon. Don't make him the you know your sole proprietor. Of, it's it was just it's just um you know playing catch with his brother. You know they they have to do something different on the power play. Um, but I think his shot's just not going to be there for maybe until January. Mm-hmm. Like he'll score goals, but he's not going to be like his shot is actually fantastic. I don't think it's going to be there for a while. So you got two things. He's finally going to get fixed. Hopefully this stops the injuries. He'll play more. But I think you kind of have to change the way he plays for a couple of months. He has to be a facilitator. And how are you going to replace those goals? Are you asking me or are you just saying rhetorically? I, I mean, Do you have an answer? Well, I mean, you know, one guy should not be scoring all the New Jersey Devils goals. It's a team concept, team game. Um, Right, but you have to replace 35 goals, theoretically, like, or what you expect from Hughes is 35 goals. Well, I would think that Dougie Hamilton coming back, I think his injury is uh, quite severe. Um, Timo Meyer. That one worries me. Guys, don't come back from torn packs and play well. But anyway, sorry, keep going. Well, I'm just answering your question. No, it's a good point. It's a good point. I'm just, I, I, I guess I was just adding on top of that that I'm also worried about how he's going to come back. Luckily, it happened in December. So, you know, he's going to have 10 months of recovery time. But, you know, I just, Matt Dumba had a torn pack, and we saw how he played this year. And a couple other defensemen had torn packs just haven't looked good. But, Dougie Hamilton's also a different specimen. He's like a, 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 a athletic masterpiece. So, you know, those guys tend to, to you know, because I my, my example when I talked about it was T.J. Watt, who's also an athletic masterpiece. And he was able to um, – the. He and he came back early, right? He came back like in the middle of the season after a torn pack. So like that's the that's the upper echelon. Like this might happen, and then there's like Matt Dumba who like just doesn't look like the same guy. So yeah, sorry, I, I didn't mean to just derail your point. Go on, Team Meyer. I'm sorry. No, I I'm just saying there's other guys in Jack Hughes, Nick. You know, right? Yeah, and Jesper Bratt truthfully got so unlucky this year. And he still had a great season, but he he's he's a hundred point player. Jesper Brad is a one hundred point player. He's gonna hit. I think he's gonna hit it next year. He was so good at at even strength that even just menial upgrades on the power play system is gonna get him to a hundred points. What is does he? He doesn't have eighty yet, right? He's like seventy something. I don't know. Ramona, are you listening in the YouTube live? Normally, she, she loves Jesper Bratt. She's mad that I want him <laughs> traded. Why do you want Jesper Bratt traded? Uh, for one reason. It has nothing to do with Jesper Bratt. Is it Kachuk? Well, I want Kachuk, but <laughs> it's a stupid so reason. It's a stupid reason. It has nothing to do with hockey. Oh, oh, oh. Um, he has 79 points, so he's probably going to get to 80. Um, you know, if he finishes the season as a point per game forward, I mean, that's that's well worth what you paid for him. The people who, like, don't like Brad this season, he hasn't scored a ton, but he's getting a lot of primary assists. He's passing the puck probably better than Hughes and anybody else on the team. And... He's just a, so good at even strength that we just have to figure out what his role needs to be in the power play. They just they just didn't have anybody in the right spot. So I think um, – oh, wow. Sorry. TMZ just came out with breaking news on the Shoei Otani thing and distracted me. Um, what happened? Please tell me now before we end the podcast. The, apparently, the interpreter is going to get charged by the feds, and they absolved Shohei of wrongdoing. I didn't expect that. 
But uh, you know, this isn't the time for a conspiracy theory. So, okay, let's get out of here before I get myself in trouble. Yeah, but if but trust me, if Otani was on the Mets, uh, you know, he would get sucked in so badly. <laughs> the only thing I'm going to say is if they if they arrested Shohei Otani, it would be an international incident. Oh yeah. That's all I'm gonna say. Yep. So, but I bid you adieu. <laughs> so wh- can I do some plugs? Yeah, go right ahead. Um, bucksandbitchworks.com. Nick Natale talked about three prospects who are in the playoffs, unlike the Devils, and how they're doing. Uh, some are doing well. Um, obviously, he's not even talking about Seamus Casey, who's um, are they in the championship? I missed what happened this week because I was at WrestleMania. Nick, uh, I've had a rough week. So okay, yeah. no, I, I so. think I think Michigan's in the championship. I know they're still alive. So Ethan Edwards, Seamus Casey, still playing playing for for that championship. Um, uh, but he he doesn't even talk about them. But he talks about a couple other players that are that are doing really well in their respective playoffs. Um, I wrote that piece on 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 Jack Hughes's doctor, Doctor Millette. Uh, so go check that out if you want to learn more about the shoulder surgery, what might have led to the decision, and the doctor and, and who this doctor's worked at, what what kind of um, work he's done, and why he's the premier shoulder surgeon in his field. Um, um, Marcy Rubin's got a piece that's coming out uh, just on reasons to be optimistic for next season. Uh, Vinny Parisi wrote a piece about... Um, Oh, he wrote a piece about the why the Devils should be in the playoffs right now, and it's because of the dr- dr- draconian standings rules that the that the NHL still r- goes by. Um, Jesse Dworkin wrote about Jack Hughes's injury, and Sam, I, I didn't deliver on the Wayne Gretzky piece just because a lot of breaking news things happened that I had to just kind of address on the site. So that's still coming. So I apologize, but I'm going to get to those coach pieces that uh, that we talked about today. So the first one is out. Five coaches they get hired today with lots of experience, some even championship experience. So go check that out. Pucksandpitchforks.com right now. Yeah. And um, I have one thing to say. I'm a big believer in karma. And um, after hearing what Peter Laviolette said last night oh my god sorry that that thing i uh, so mad so mad now i don't want people hurt that that's not the point but you just man like he they like ran into each other and you're like he did it on purpose like you got this dude who's elbowing people in the head on purpose and you're like it didn't look that bad no 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 he he couldn't he couldn't help it because he's just growing so much like that excuse you know so I'm um, so glad we didn't hire that putz. He didn't want to come here anyway. Yeah, I think he put like an impossible price on the thing, but he got he got a very high salary in Washington. Yeah, I still think he looks anyway. like a Hockley from Titanic. <laughs> you know. Anyway. All righty. Uh, yeah, that, that thing just made me mad. But anyway, I yep. love you. Yep. So, um, all right. Want to thank all those tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow. Game day live and Devils after dark, as the season winds down, and also uh, you know this weekend when the Devils take on the Flyers, and and then obviously the last game of the season. But we'll have no off season, Nick, because the podcast continues. That's right. The podcast will continue. Dropping the podcast at midnight. Go to pucksandpitchforks.com. Till next time, let's go double.